This 2013 iMac is going to have its hard drive replaced with a solid state drive, and I'm going to show you how to do so. In order to complete the process, you will need a gasket, an opening wheel, and a wedge to support the iMac. Install the wedge in the back of the iMac. Turn the iMac to where the screen is facing toward you. Use the opening wheel to start from the left side and gently work your way around, firmly inserting the wheel all the way into the bezel. If you do not have an opening tool, just be sure to not insert your credit card or other tool more than 3 eighths of an inch into the iMac. You may have to run the tool back and forth several times to ensure that the adhesive is completely removed. Remove the screen slowly to ensure that you're not going to damage any components inside, such as the connectors. If there is any additional adhesive left behind, use the tool to remove that gently. Once the screen is freed, you want to start from the top and work your way down so the screen is still being held by the bottom face of the iMac. Now you should have access to the screen's connectors. Carefully reach in and remove them one at a time. Ensure not to break or damage any of the gold prongs or connector brackets that keep the wiring intact. Using a plastic tool, cut the pieces of the adhesive along the bottom of the screen. This is freeing the screen from the actual iMac itself. Once you've completed that, you should be able to lift the screen directly towards you away from the iMac. With the screen off of the iMac, you're going to want to remove all of the remaining adhesive on the screen itself. It's located on the outer edges of the glass. Carefully use a plastic tool to scrape this off. The same thing applies on the iMac. You must remove all of the remaining adhesive strips left behind. After you have removed all the adhesive, take a good check over the bezel to make sure there is nothing left behind. You need a smooth fit with the new gasket, and no adhesive can be in its way. Since these iMacs are sealed shut, now is a good time to dust out all of the components, including the system fans. I recommend an air compressor or a can of air. With a T10 Torx screwdriver, we will remove the four screws that hold the hard drive in the iMac. Be sure to take account of where the screws went because there are three different sets of screws. Remove the right side cover, then remove the left side cover, which are securing the hard drive down. The hard drive's rubber sheath can be gently removed by just pulling it out towards you. Be careful of the connectors on the left side. I used my thumb to gently hold it down while I pulled the drive out. The new solid state drive should fit right in the same place of the old hard drive. Just simply unpack your new solid state drive, whatever brand it is, and orient it in the same fashion that the original hard drive came out of the computer. 
In this case, I'm using a Samsung Evo 860. Be sure to keep your connectors on the drives facing the same direction to ensure the proper fit. I'm going to keep the original hard drive later in the video and clone it so that way I do not have to install a fresh copy of Mac OS. After unpacking and verifying you have all the pieces, locate the right hand piece for the screen. Once you have this piece, go ahead and size it up to the actual iMac to make sure a proper fit will occur. Now you can remove the adhesive. Carefully remove one side at a time. Use the guide hole on the adhesive and your tool to hold it up against the iMac. Then start one piece at a time pushing down. You can now remove the second piece of adhesive. Make sure everything is exactly fit as it should so that way you can ensure the screen will not have any issues in its placement. Continue the same steps for the rest of the iMac. Now we're going to do the top right. Now we can move on to the top left. Make sure you leave the proper spacing between the webcam and the adhesive and not to go over the edge of the iMac. Now for the bottom adhesives. We'll match them up and leave a small amount of space in the center for the sensor at the bottom of the LCD screen. Once you've achieved the proper fit, you can remove the back strip on the adhesive and adhere it to the front of the iMac. Start with the right side first, then move on to the left. Make sure you leave all of the protective seals on the adhesive at this moment. Complete the drive mounting by installing the brackets back in their original places. Make sure you match the correct screws to the correct places using your T10 Torx screwdriver. With your cleanly prepared screen containing no existing adhesives, place the screen back on the iMac, starting with the bottom first. 
You need to match each corner of the glass to the right and left side of the iMac to ensure the perfect center fit for the webcam to be focused clearly. After you've properly aligned the screen, we're going to use some blue painter's tape to hold the screen in place temporarily. Then we will connect the screen's connectors and do our migration from the hard drive to the solid state drive. At that point, once we've ensured everything is working properly, we'll remove the painter's tape and connect the rest of the adhesives to the actual screen. With limitation to how far you can move the screen away from the cables, be careful when reconnecting all of the LCD's internal connectors. At this point, you can close up the screen by removing the adhesive strips, but I recommend you wait till the next step of actually installing OSX off of a drive and powering the machine up. That way you can ensure everything is working properly before you close the seal. With everything connected correctly and a properly built USB installer for OSX, you should be able to boot right off of the drive without doing any key commands. At this point, we are waiting to get into setup and then we will partition, format, and install Mac OS X on our new solid state drive. On the installer screen, click on the disk utility. Once there, click on the root of the solid state drive and erase it using APFS or Mac OS X extended journal based on your preference. With a solid state drive, I recommend using the APFS container format. Next, agree to the terms and conditions and install it on your newly formatted solid state drive. Be patient with the installation progress. The iMac will reboot several times and eventually the progress bar will reach the end and ultimately tell you an estimated time remaining. Now to finalize the installation progress, choose your region settings and then, in this case, we are going to transfer from an existing hard drive. Plug the existing hard drive in with a USB 3.0 cable, and you will eventually see the source pop up on the screen. Now you may power down the iMac so we can complete the gaskets. Remove the power cord from the iMac, then gently remove all of the connectors for the screen from the computer again. With the screen open again, begin to remove the adhesive protector strips at the bottom. I had trouble with these ones, so I had to get a different tool to help remove the strips while preserving the adhesive itself. With the adhesive exposed, be sure to check the alignment with the bezel and the iMac itself. Then connect the screen back to the logic board carefully. As you start to remove the rest of the adhesive strips, use your hand to hold the screen in place so it does not fall down without completing the rest of the process. Use a cloth to wipe off the web camera from any debris incurred during the process. With everything in alignment, go ahead and seal up the screen to the iMac. Do not press too hard so that the glass is not stressed during the adhesion. Remove the painter's tape from the bottom of the iMac. And now you've completed upgrading your 2013 to 2015 21 and a half inch iMac. Cheers.